has some breaking news for you. That is an investigation is underway after two men were stabbed in Clapham High Street. Now, um, this is from the police. They're saying that the incident happened at about quarter past ten on Sunday as the two men stood outside a nightclub. They were approached by a man who attacked them with a knife before running away. Both men, who are aged in their 20s and 30s, were taken to hospital for treatment. They've since been discharged and inquiries are ongoing to locate and arrest the suspect. Um, while the inquiries into the circumstances are ongoing, at this stage, this incident is being treated as a homophobic attack. So this is being treated as a homophobic attack at this stage and an investigation is underway. Detective Inspector Gary Castle um, of Central South Command has said, we are acutely aware of the shock this attack will cause members of the LGBT plus community and we want to reassure people that an urgent investigation is ongoing to locate the person responsible. We recently announced the reinstatement of LGBT plus community liaison officers for each of our 12 BCUs in London to support and advise on investigations where homophobia is a motive. So an investigation is underway um, after two men were stabbed in Clapham. It will have been discussed between Rishi Sumak and Zelensky. Yeah, good afternoon, SJ. Um, inevitably, this is a round that Zelensky will be going around all the global leaders for an update. Front of house, closer defence cooperation. Zelensky always starts with a list of requirements for weapons, no doubt, wants ammunition, air defence weapons. But the three topics I suspect behind the scenes that, are, first of all, uh, President Zelensky was very upset about the NATO conference, didn't have a clear route through. He'll be looking forward to how that security is going to be guaranteed. And Richard Sunak has been part of the sort of G7 conversation about potential security options. Um, they will also be asking about the uh, progress on the spring offensive, bluntly. President Zelensky is going to have to manage expectations of the West. We're seven weeks in, still no breakthrough. And also this grain deal. Ukraine is the seventh largest exporter of grain in the world. Um, it's uh, July and August are the uh, harvesting times. They'll be very worried about how, you know, how this progresses. Um, there's a real concern, isn't there, that Russia may try to uh, ramp up its attack on Ukrainian exports. And um, this afternoon, James Cleverly, uh, the Foreign Secretary, said that Russia could actually start targeting civilian ships in the Black Sea. Um, why is Russia targeting um, Ukrainian grain and, and, and food supplies? The, the un only answer to that, obviously, is President Putin still wants to know, but it is uh, ever since they walked away from the grain deal, Russia's been pounding the Odessa port facilities and the grain itself. Uh, and given the importance of it, there was a suggestion that some of the merchant shipping said they'd be prepared to run the gauntlet just to keep... because they earn a lot of money by, obviously, exporting the grain. Uh, but Russia's actually mined some of the port areas, and they've also said that any civilian ships making an approach, they'll assume that they're carrying arms and, therefore, they'll be open to attack. And that prompted James Cleverly to tweet uh, and to warn that actually there's a grave risk of this whole thing escalating. What's interesting, though, it's not just Odessa. So um, you don't just have to go across the Black Sea fleet from Odessa. You can also use um, uh, the Danube River to actually get uh, grain out as well, down that goes through Rennie and up through, um, through Germany. But last night, the Russians targeted Rennie. Um, and actually, there were uh, 15 drone attacks, seven people injured in attacks there. What's deeply worrying is Rennie is right on the border of Romania. Romania is a NATO weapons and suddenly you've triggered uh, a grave escalation in this. Now, from a military perspective, there's no reason for Russia to target that. It's purely trying to damage grain. And what's interesting, Russia claims that it's ready to negotiate again about grain. The UN Security Council is putting pressure. Even China, mm -hmm. a normal bedfellow of Russia, is trying to put pressure on them. The harsh reality is, though, Russia is driving down global availability of grain. That's pushing up the prices. And who is the number one of exporter of, of grain in the world? It's Russia. So they're the ones who are going to benefit. They're weaponising grain. That's against the Geneva Convention. It's illegal. It's having global consequences. And there's a lot going on in the Black Sea at the moment. Uh, and we've been talking over recent weeks about drone attacks. Russia reckoned that they foiled one uh, in, in the Black Sea. What details do we have about that? Very sparse, inevitably, because it's out at sea. Russia claims that two uh, maritime drones were, that were targeting the Black Sea fleet, that they've actually shot them down. It's quite possible they have. What it does, though, is it illustrates the growth of use of drones in warfare. I mean, the Ukrainians have used them to attack uh, the uh, Crimea regularly. Only the other day, they said they'd used 17. Russia claimed, yeah, we shot them all down. Mm. 
and then afterwards admitted that their ammunition dump had been blown up and they'd evacuated three miles around it. Also, in Moscow, you remember, there were a couple of drone attacks there. Yeah. Now, the thing about drone attacks, they're not always militarily effective, but actually, if you throw enough drones at it, some of them do get through. Quantity has a quality of its own. And it does appear we've sort of started the drone wars here, this level of innovation quickly to the front line. And I think what's topical is the latest uh, announcement of aid by the US, a £300 million uh, uh, pound aid package, actually includes some Hornets nano drones, which is the first time we've seen these used. Now, these are tiny. They're about six inches long. They weigh about an ounce. Mm. But they can travel at 14 miles an hour. They can fly for 25 minutes. And they can provide live video footage straight from the battlefield in. And this is a part of the aid that's being provided by America. It's just amazing, the pace of development, and it's having a really significant impact on the... Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.